Right, so here's the plan. I know I should be working on the dresser, but it's Sunday afternoon, that's my day of rest, and I wanna have some fun in the shop, and I've got a canoe trip coming up in two weeks, and um, yeah, I feel like trying to build a paddle, so. Uh... This is the, my most recent paddle that was for my personal use. It's a beaver tail. This was the very first paddle I made. It was uh, an otter tail. And I want to make something like this, but I want a slightly longer blade. I'm using some stuff from Canoe Craft. I'm using some stuff that I just found on the web. So this is the pattern that I was starting with, which used to be the pattern for my otter tail, and I just wanted to make it a little bit longer. So I size the paddle by going roughly up to my chin height and then the other thing that you do is you hold it sort of with your arms a little bit shoulder length apart and so I still have some room down here where I can bring the blade up three inches which is what I'm doing. So the length of the paddle depends on the person, the shape of the blade depends on what you want to do. The one dimension that I find that you really want to stick with is an inch and a quarter. You want your shaft to start with stock that's an inch and a quarter. So the simplest thing is to set your saw to an inch and a quarter and rip everything to be the same thickness before you laminate it together. And so with all the pieces cut to an inch and a quarter, now I get to have fun arranging them in different combinations. It's kind of like making a cutting board like that, and it's the creative part of the process that I really love. So with my paddle, I have a strip of teak running right down the middle. I've never done one all the way down the middle of the handle before. There's no reason why it shouldn't work out. Um, I'm kind of forced into doing it simply because I didn't have enough uh, maple that was thick enough. So, piece of teak down the middle and some maple on either side. This is going to be the shaft of the handle. It's, for me, it's 64, 65 inches long. And then I'm gonna have another piece of teak, piece of paduk, another piece of teak, so I get the red in between the dark, and another maple to lighten it up again, and then finally some cherry on the outside, which will give us another bit of reddish color. And then I mirror it on either side. And it's like, well, is that big enough, you think? And that's where you take your pattern. I learned this from a little video I saw from Nick Offerman. You have a hole in the pattern which lines up with the center line, so it helps you find the center of your blank. And I can see that I have enough wood here along the side to cut the paddle out, and it's mirrored for the other side. Up here at the hand grip end of things, of course I have to have maple and teak because that's the continuation of the main shaft. And then I'm going to sort of mirror what I'm doing down below. So I've got teak, paduk, and teak, and some cherry, and then the same on the other side. You push play, push record on the camera, and that's when you find out that your glue bottle is all gummed up. So wow, that was a bit more of an intense glue up than I'd anticipated. I've never done one with the lamination up the shaft before and I, I hadn't really thought this through as to just how hectic it would be to make sure everything was clamped and tight and fingers crossed, we'll check back tonight and see how that glue up went. I got glue all over my hands now. So with the paddle blank unclamped, the next thing I need to do is mark the center lines on the edge and on the middle. And I've made myself a bit of a challenge there because I have this nice stripe of teak down the middle, but now I need to get the pencil line down the middle of that. And I, you need to do that so that you can mark out your template.
Now, if you don't have a bandsaw, you can use a jigsaw for cutting this out. In fact, that might even be easier. Um, I've always used the bandsaw because I have one, but uh, that requires a lot of really wild swinging of this thing as I'm making the cuts. Duke dust gets everywhere. So now with the basic shape of the paddle cut out, now I'm going to strike a center line down the edge and then I'll use, we'll use that for thickening and then on the blade you'll strike a line an eighth of an inch on either side of the center also and that's what we're going to taper towards. Having something flexible and drawing the line makes it a lot easier. Follow the shape. So that bandsaw work is about the most nerve-wracking for me because you make a mistake and you've ruined your paddle. And the reason I do it is because it takes off a huge amount of wood that you would otherwise have to do with a block plane or something else. So I mean, the benefits to using the bandsaw to thin down the blade and then also for just turning this into a bit more of an octagon shape and the initial handle shaping, you could do it all with hand tools. I don't want to. And uh, so far this has worked pretty good for me. Some people they leave more of a raised spine down the blade and they angle it. I tend to go with more of a, just an overall flattish blade. Works for me. So next for me is a whole bunch of block plane work and a whole bunch of work on the belt sander. Do a lot of shaping on the belt sander. And, uh, but still, I am uh, one afternoon's work so far. And I'm this far. It is, well, okay afternoon and evening's work. So, onward. On my previous paddles, I would do all the shaft work by hand with the block plane, just spinning and spinning. I've since picked up this rather large router bit and I'm going to try using that to uh, take away the bulk of the uh, shaft material. Hoping it works out. of a sudden in about 30-40 minutes what was looking like a rough canoe paddle all of a sudden seems to come together. I'm always surprised at how quickly the shaft just goes round even mostly with the block plane just planing and spinning and planing and spinning you just trust your hands trust your touch you feel a little part where there's a bit of a ridge you just a little bit of keep it spinning as you turn the block plane feels a little better and you just keep working. The main focus is down here, that's where your hand is going to be and then later on up here. The part from here to here, you don't really put your hand on there much so it doesn't need to be as perfect or as smooth or as round. I still try to make it as perfect and smooth and round as everything else but 
this is the part you really want to focus on right down here. That's where you're going to have your hand all day long when you're on the water. So here's where I'm getting a bit messy because I'm going a little bit off script. When you buy a paddle in the store, they often come with a, a resin tip. They've done that and I don't really have an easy way to do that here in my shop. I have some scrap fiberglass cloth left over from when I helped make a canoe a couple of years ago. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap that here around the tip just to give a bit of reinforcement and strength because after all this is going to get banged on rocks and stuff and this is going to get messy because yeah the little the fibers will come off the end and all that but it should dry pretty transparent when all is said and done so okay Okay, let's see. Oh yeah. Alright, that's about it for now. We just gotta let it dry and see what it looks like. I'm sure it's gonna add a lot of strength. It just might be a little funny looking, but once the rest of it's got finish on it, it should all blend in. And besides, I have to keep telling myself, you're making something that's beautiful, but it is a tool. It's going to get stuck in the water, it's going to get banged on rocks, it's going to get dropped on the shore. It's a tool. I'm going to make it look nice, but once it's done, I'm going to use it. When it comes to finishing, I drill a hole in the handle, put a little hook in it so I can hang it from the ceiling, and then uh, I use a spar urethane, and uh, I, I wipe it on with a rag because uh, you're not putting on very much, and it seems kind of a waste to get a get a get a brush dirty only to then have to clean it off again. Tomorrow I'll give it a sanding and put on another coat and, and another coat and, and so on and so forth. So you think it's any good? Let's find out.